What is the currency used in India? Oh, come on. Mate, look who's Let the chaser! <laughs> look who's the chaser! <laughs> hey, you are not welcome! Yeah, yeah! Both of these boys are fucking pissed off! This is all thanks to established titles. Some things are fake. And I've actually been challenged by like, guys like, you know, Bro Deshaun, like these kind of like irrelevant YouTubers in a way. <laughs> But I watched it first, and I was like, no, nah, man, this guy's gone too fucking far. What the fuck? <laughs> That's out the way. What if I told you there was a YouTuber who hadn't uploaded in over four years, but still is one of the biggest creators on the platform? Well, you would probably know who it is because of the title and thumbnail of the video. That's right, today we'll be seeing how Roadshaw, also known as Bog, managed to dominate the platform for so many years, despite the enemies he's made along the way. Before we even take a look at his career, I actually posted an extremely original video on Roadshaw about a year ago, and got a few questions in the comments that still haven't been answered. Where is Bog? How is Bog? What is Bog? I can actually answer that one. There are many legends surrounding the origins of the nickname Bog. According to Harry himself, Joe Weller used to call him Harold Bog, and the Bog just got stuck with him. You don't choose the Bog, the Bog chooses you. But Bog is a fucking shit nickname, you know? It's a toilet, and so hopefully it fades at some point. But Mini Minter has a different theory. Harry, Harold, Haroldinho, Dinio, Dean. Bog, bog. Yeah, let's just stick with the first theory. Where the hell did W2S appear from? Born and raised on the little island known as Guernsey, Harry Lewis was creating videos at the young age of 10. He's always had that sleazy Saul Goodman type persona. You know what I mean, at the age of 14 he organised a fake iPad giveaway on his channel. Way ahead of his time. He would post anything from football challenges to front flip tutorials, but he then slowly started making FIFA content, where his slightly over the top reactions would gain a lot of views. 2014, Roadshow was in New York, and he was spotted by someone. Don't worry, it's not a nonce, it's just famous YouTuber Zerka. And Josh Zerka had coincidentally started a group with some other YouTubers, the Sidemen. A few YouTubers had noticed that Roadshow was going down a bad path, as he was young, 16, famous, and rich. YouTuber Nep tells Josh to keep an eye on him, and that's how Harry joined the Sidemen. And since joining them, Roadshow has made many enemies along the way. The first one being YouTuber Ezekiel. So in 2015, most FIFA YouTubers would get sponsored by FIFA coin websites. The use and promotion of these websites was against FIFA TOS. But these FIFA coin sites were making money. So Harry and another YouTuber, Ezekiel Gaming, have the idea of creating their own website, which was quite a smart idea. The website was obviously extremely successful, but Ezekiel kept most of the profit and lied to WTS about how much money the website actually made. It is estimated that he owes Harry over £100,000. Harry never took any legal action whatsoever against Ezekiel. He probably didn't think it was worth his time and was already making a ludicrous amount of money. Ezekiel Gaming has gone against his claims, but he didn't look very innocent when he appeared in JJ's diss track against Roger Shaw. So if Ezekiel wasn't that much of a threat, this next person did a bit more damage to Roadshaw's career. The same year, in April 2015, Roadshaw and Mini Minter accused YouTuber Bashiverse of paedophilia on Twitter. But as some users noticed, the word paedophilia in their tweets was written the American way instead of the British way. Paedophilia. The fan theories were correct. They got hacked. Along with KSI, the hacker Buddy Bear 2 had access to the personal information of the three sidemen and posted a leak of Rochashaw's nutsack on the platform. Later, the accounts were given back and they all made a post thanking Buddy Bear 2 for giving back the account. Now, Buddy Bear 2 did show some mercy at the end, but some would say that Rochashaw's biggest nemesis throughout his career is none other than cocaine. Rice gum! Rice gum! KSI was in LA and was thinking of leaving the Sidemen to join a new content group, The Clout Gang. You just know they'll be going very far with that name. The Clout Gang was composed of FaZe Banks, Alicia Violet and Rice Gum himself. After Ethan releases a diss track on JJ, Harry decided to join in on the fun and posts a banger of a video titled KSI Sucks, Rice Gum and KSI Diss Track. This launched the Sidemen beef era, a period where diss tracks would be fired at each other from all sides. I got your mum twerking for my rupees! A year later, in 2018, the relationship between the Sidemen is better. Ricegum teases that he wants to fight someone after the success of the Joe Weller KSI fight, so Harry gets ready for some boxing against Ricegum. But Ricegum ends up decking the fight, leaving Roadshaw no other choice than making a second diss track towards Ricegum. Good afternoon! Your mum looks like Kim Jong-un! 
With a content cup on top of that and a lack of uploading, Rice Gum's career slowly started to fizzle out. Attacking Rice Gum was probably the best thing Harry could have done, but sometimes you just have to ignore the enemy. And that is what Roach Shaw did in 2020. WHS had to go against every YouTuber's scariest fear, K-pop fans. After finding old tweets of his that were deemed to be cursed with the ists, the BTS army could smell blood. I tried to cancel him on Twitter with some pretty scary hashtags. Oh, Guernsey. But the support for Harry was so overwhelmingly strong that the cancellation attempt faded away pretty quickly, which was a bit like what happened in 2022 when Roadshaw was caught with a large amount of YouTubers promoting a company that was seen as a scam. Established titles, but thanks to Harry's sleazy nature that I talked about earlier, nothing really happened to him. What's funny is that while most YouTubers were trying to backtrack and apologize to viewers for taking the established title sponsorship, Harry was one of the only YouTubers to actually post a video sponsored by established titles during the drama and he managed to fly under the radar. No one really cared that he had taken the sponsorship and like some YouTubers who got grilled for weeks by their fans. There were a few comments here and there but nothing big. So as you can see, even though he hasn't uploaded a video on his main channel for years, Roadshaw can now avoid being in the center of attention, but still upload content on his other channels. Today he started a new golf channel with Theo Baker, which is already showing signs of success. Assignments still seem to be growing bigger and bigger, and even though it looks like he won't be uploading on his channel for a very long time, he still has quite a big presence on the platform. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed.